everybody. Welcome to Rambling Rose Farmhouse. I'm happy to have you here today. Today I'm out here in the garden and I'm going to be picking purple hull peas and then we're going to go inside and I'm going to show you how we shell them and get them ready to freeze. But the best part of this whole video is going to be the way I'm going to show you how to freeze them. So a few years ago, a friend of mine, Karen, she told me about this method and it is absolutely the easiest way you'll ever free freeze peas. Um, there's really nothing to it. It's so super quick. And so that's the part that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So if you're just here for that part, I'm going to put chapters in my video. So if you can just um, fast forward to the part you want to see. And I want to hear your thoughts on this method after I show it to you. I want to know whether you've ever seen this before, heard about it before, tried it, and just like what your initial thought is. Because when she told me about it, my initial thought was that sounds crazy and I don't know if it's going to work. But I did it or we did it. Um, my husband actually did it the first time and it has worked great and this is the only way that we put our peas up now and so you know it works great for us okay so these are the purple hull peas and you can see that there's quite a few of them i've picked a few in this bucket already but there's quite a few of these that are ready so that's what i'm out here trying to do early this morning you can tell they're still due on them my husband hates picking when there's dew on them, but I hate the afternoon heat. Our garden's in the sun in the afternoon, and it's just way too hot, so I like to pick in the morning. Peas are actually <clears throat> easier to pick than um, like the green beans are because the green beans are way down in the plant, and the peas make up on these stalks, these stalks that stick up, so they mostly are right on the top. And these purple hull peas, you know, it makes it a lot easier to pick those because they're purple, so they stand out from the green and they're pretty easy to see. So here they are before they're ripe. And um, like, like here's one that's, get this one over here, doesn't have any purple on it at all. So this is how it starts out. And then, you know, the progression, it starts getting some purple, gets more purple until it ends up like this and then it's ready to go ready to get picked but anyway i just wanted to show you that that they really are not that difficult to pick because they grow up out of the top instead of down in the bushy part here's another one that's getting pretty close so i've done one side i'm taking a little bit of a break and i'm fixing to go down the other side of this bed here's what I have so far it's about a half of a five gallon bucket so this bucket will probably be full by the time I get down the other side of the bed picking well look who showed up to come help me pick some peas today So I'm back inside. I don't know if you can tell, but I have about three-fourths of a bucket is what I picked of these purple hull peas. And so what I'm going to do, since it was, there was still dew on them when I picked them, I'm going to go ahead and get them out of this bucket and lay them out on the counter because if not, they could start getting um, molded in there and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to do that and as soon as I finish, um, I'm going to cook breakfast for me and mama, and then after that I'm going to start working on these, and I'm going to get her started shelling peas today. She doesn't know that yet, but she's going to have a project to work on. She helps with shelling peas and snapping beans and things like that that she can do. So this way they can at least get some air to them down in those buckets if you use like this, like a um, five gallon bucket that's plastic it really holds moisture if there's um, you know any moisture on your vegetables whatever vegetables you pick so this way they'll be able to dry out and not 
um, get moldy. So I'm going to let these sit here and then in a few minutes I'm going to start um, um, running these through the splitter to make them easier to shell so that my mama can do them. Aren't they pretty? Okay, I'm going to show you how I'm getting these peas ready to shell. And the secret for us to doing that is this little tool right here. So if you've watched many of my videos, you know that we do things um, usually the old fashioned way, the way that we were taught from grandparents and older people like that. And so I think that we got this from um, my husband's grandfather a long time ago. This is one of the things, this makes shell and pea so much easier. And I don't know that you can get these now. We've looked, um, it's one of the things that I look for every time I go to an antique store, if they have a little section of like little kitchen items, I always look for one of these and I've never found one anywhere. So um, this is like a very important tool for our kitchen. And it just, it's a little plastic thing. It has a little metal there and a, um, a razor blade fits into it and part of it sticks up on the side. So when you put your pea through here, it splits the pea. And all you need, it doesn't necessarily have to even split the whole thing. All you need is just one little part and then that makes it so much easier to open the whole rest of the thing up and get the peas out. So when you don't do that, you've got to sit here with your pea and you've got to just, you know, you got, you, it's, it just takes a lot more work. It takes a lot more work to get this thing open to be able to get the peas out of it. So I am going to sit here and I'm going to split these peas so that I can give them to my mama and she can shell them and it'll be a whole lot easier. So I'm just going to show you how this thing works. And see, there it is. It's split. This one, you know, some of these bigger, fuller ones, it splits all the way down. Some of them, it only splits one little part. Um, and honestly, I thought you were supposed to go in through the big side and out through the little side. That might not be right. I'm finding that it works a whole lot easier for me if I go in through the small side. So that's how I do it. But right or wrong, this thing is amazing. And so that's something you can be on the lookout for if you go thrift shopping, garage sales, um, antique stores. And if you find one and you don't want it, contact me because I would love to have an extra one. Because so many times, just like if you've seen like my corn video so many times we have so many people together working on projects like this of course today it's only me and my mama that are working on it we're the only people home but um when you have more than one person that could be doing this at the same time it helps to have more than one tool and we don't have more than one tool we don't have any sort of p shell or machine or anything we do it by hand but this little splitter makes it so much easier see it's just opening that thing up and it especially makes it i'm not sure that it got that one some of the skinnier ones it doesn't necessarily catch but see all it needs to catch is one little part because then from there it's a lot easier to go ahead and split the rest of it open after you've got that little part started for you. And then it's easy to get those peas out of there. Now this one's already, it's already started splitting, so I don't have to do that. You just have to be really careful that's a sharp razor blade and you don't want it to get you. This is the secret to easily shelling your peas. And when I get these done, I'm going to show you the absolute easiest way to put your peas up or preserve them for the winter. You're not going to believe how easy this is. 
So don't go anywhere because that's coming up next. So here's my sweet mama, shell and peas today. And like I said before, this is one of the jobs that she always does to help us out when we're in the middle of all of this big major garden harvest. Okay, so now I have all these peas that I need to put up. I'm fixing to share with you something that I learned a couple of years ago, and it honestly is life-changing. It's a life-changing thing, and it just, it works so well, and it's so simple. It's the simplest way that you will ever uh, put peas up. So the secret to simple pea preservation is a pillowcase. That's pretty simple. It does have to be a 100% cotton pillowcase. And the one I have right here is, it's a Better Homes and Garden um, brand. And it says it's 100% Egyptian cotton. So that's all you need is a 100% cotton pillowcase. For me, this is the second one that I'm doing this year because I don't want my pillowcase to be too big or too full. So you just are gonna put your peas into the pillowcase. Now, part of uh, what makes this work is that they have to be dry. So if you wash your peas first, you have to dry them. And the way I dry my peas is I lay a towel out on my counter, I put them on there, I let them sit, I take another towel and I pat them from the top. So if I have wet peas, that's what I do. The other thing about this that I've kind of learned through doing it is like if you if you're not finished with all of your peas and you want to just put them in the refrigerator if you take these and put them in the refrigerator um, especially like in a Ziploc bag or something when you take them out they're gonna be wet if you look at them they're not gonna be dry like they are right now just coming out of the shells so again you have to dry those if your peas have moisture on them it's gonna cause it to turn into ice when you put it in the freezer and that's not what you want um, it's just not gonna be the best thing for your peas and if they're really wet like if you washed them and they were really wet it's just gonna make them stick together in like one big mess and you don't want that either so dry peas and a 100% um, cotton pillowcase is the secret to doing this and all you do you know is you just put your peas into the pillowcase so you can use your hand you can use um, some type of scoop, you know, like this, whatever works for you. Now, when I have my pillowcase in the freezer, when I go to get peas out to cook, this is what I usually take. So it's a two cup um, measuring cup and I'll take it in there and I'll just open up my pillowcase with my frozen peas and I'll scoop out two cups of frozen peas and bring them into my kitchen. Or if I'm wanting to do more than that, I'll take a pot or a bowl or something in there with me and I'll scoop out however many I want and put them in there. And then you just close your pillowcase back up. But I learned this technique a few years ago. I was visiting with my friend at her house in Mississippi the last week in June. And June, last week, last of June, early july is when our peas usually get ready so my husband was at home and he was dealing with the garden and he had picked a lot of peas he had shelled them he had them already on the freezer and he called me in mississippi and asked me like what do i need to do how do i need to get you know put these peas up and she heard me talking to him on the phone telling him like you know how i did it and she said oh oh wait a minute there's a much simpler way. You have to try this. And so she told me, you know, gave me instructions of what to tell him, which was what I've just told you. Get a cotton pillowcase, make sure your peas are dry, put them in there. And we, so he did that. Actually that year, he did that by himself. And those peas that he put up that year lasted two years in the freezer in the pillowcase now i mean we were using out of them but he had put so many up that it took two years to use them all and they were fine like they didn't get bad so i was very much sold at that point on the whole pillowcase method 
because I know, like I said, that they'll last at least two years they did for us that year. And so we have done them this way every year since. And it just really, it works out well. Now I do have a little moisture here in the bottom of my pan. So I think these other ones, I'm gonna have to dry these before I can put those in there. But what you do once you get them in here, you know you're just gonna tighten up your pillowcase around them like this. And I guess if you wanted to, you know, you could put a rubber band on it or maybe a twist tie or something like that. I usually just take mine and, you know, just kind of put it around my pillowcase like this. And then I lay this in my freezer. It really doesn't get any easier than that. Um, and then, like I said, if I go to get some out, I just open my pillowcase up scoop them out with my measuring cup that's what I usually use just like this and then I'm good close the rest of this back up if you do get some stuck together and sometimes you will get little bunches of them that are stuck together they really just come apart real easily if they were dry when you put them in the um, pillowcase so that's the key all cotton and dry peas so I hope you'll give this a try because I'm telling you, it is so easy. Works great for me. We've never had a problem with it not working. We've never had a problem with our peas getting bad. And usually we do use them all up in the same season, but that first year, they lasted two years. Like I said, it was the second summer after that when we had, um, were doing our peas that those were all used up from that first summer. So anyway, I hope you'll Give this a try. If you like this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments, so don't forget to do that. And I will see you back again next week for another video. And actually, I'm pretty positive that the video I'm gonna do next week, I'm gonna show you a way to cook purple whole peas. So be sure and come back for that.